Recently, I've been seeing a lot of hype about MCP servers. MCP, or the Model Context Protocol, was released by Anthropic in November of 2024 as a standardized way to build and access different tools that large language models can use. And while they seem to be exploding in popularity, there's a lot of confusion about what they are, how they work, and whether they're actually useful or just the latest thing that the AI bros on Twitter are shouting about. So in this video, I wanna answer four questions. What are MCP servers, practically speaking? How do they work? What are they useful for? And are they worth paying attention to or are they just the latest flavor of AI hype? Without further ado, let's dive into the video. Anthropic defines the model context protocol as an open standard that enables developers to build secure two-way connections between their data sources and AI powered tools. So generally speaking, the benefit of any protocol is that it provides a set of rules for computers to communicate without everyone having to write their own custom integrations from scratch. And in the context of LLMs, we've had the ability to give AI agents tools that they can use for a while, but everyone is doing it in their own way. For example, if I wanted to use the ChatGPT API, I could give it access to different tools, which are essentially different functions that it can use. And if I ask, has anyone bought my product yet? It can look through its list of available tools here to see if there are any functions it can use to help it answer that question. In this case, this search for purchases function. And so when I run this request to OpenAI, if ChatGPT responds with a function call, I can actually listen for that response and call this search for purchases function that exists in my code. And in the search for purchases function, we actually utilize Stripe's API to get information about my account to see if anyone has actually purchased my product. But you can see from this code that it's quite messy and every developer working on this particular integration would probably approach it in a slightly different way. And I think fundamentally, as far as I see it, that's the problem that MCP is trying to solve. Instead of everyone approaching these integrations in their own way, there's a standardized way where developers can write an MCP server, which is essentially just a tool like we're talking about right here that LLMs can use to do different things. So if we look at Anthropic's example of a GitHub MCP server, it looks for the most part like a pretty standard Node.js code base. And if I go to the index.ts file, it looks like there are two really important pieces to this MCP server. The first one is just listing what tools are available. So if I'm inside of a client, let's say cursor, and I'm talking to my AI coding agent, it can call this MCP server to get a list of tools that are available. And each tool obviously has a name, a description, and an input schema so that this AI agent knows what sort of input it needs to pass in to the function to be able to use this tool. The second important piece of this is actually being able to use these tools, right? And so again, going back to this cursor example, if I'm talking with my AI coding agent and it determines that I want to create a new branch in GitHub, let's say, it's going to make sure that it has all of the inputs that it needs from me. This, if you've ever worked with like chat GPT function calling in that Stripe example we were just looking at, you'll know what that conversation is going to look like. So it's going to make sure that it has all of the necessary parameters that it needs from me. And then it's going to actually go ahead and call this tool. Now, if we go look at one of these function calls here, really under the hood, what we're doing is we're just making an API request to GitHub and using what endpoints they already have available for us. So we're not actually doing anything different than we were doing in that previous Stripe example. You can see though that this is just a much more structured way to approach building these different tools that AI agents can use. So to give you a more practical example of how you might use something like this in your workflow, let's imagine that you're working inside of Cursor like I am. I'm on this site called smithery.ai, which seems to just be a huge repository of MCP servers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for Linear. Linear is a project management tool that I use every day on our team to help us manage all of the different projects and issues that we're working on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to this MCP server right here, and I'm gonna install it, or get a command rather, to install it on cursor. It's gonna ask me for my API key, which I'll just paste in, paste in right here. 
and it's going to give me this command that I can then copy and use inside of cursor. So inside of cursor, I'm going to go into my cursor settings and we're going to go to features and I'm going to scroll down until I see MCP servers. We're going to add a new MCP server. I'm going to call this linear. The type is going to be a command here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that NPX command that I was given on that previous website. Now you can see that because I've added this MCP server, I have access to all of these different tools. So now let's just imagine that I'm doing whatever I'm doing inside of my code base here. And I find an issue that I want to create inside of linear. Well, because I have this linear MCP server installed inside of cursor, what I can do is I can just go to my composer here and talk to my agent and say, Hey, I just found something that I want to create an issue for inside of linear. Please do that for me. And so you can see what this agent is going to do is recognize that I'm asking for something that has to do with linear and that it also has a tool related to linear that it might be able to use. So it's going to request to use this tool. I'm just going to go ahead and run that. So it's asking me for a title and a description and confirm if this is the correct team. So I'll say, yes, that's the correct team. We'll say title is hello from cursor and description, fix all of the code that needs to be fixed. It's gonna ask me if it can use this create issue tool. I'll say yes, go ahead. And there we go, it's created the issue in linear. Let's go check to make sure that it actually has. And if I go to all issues, there you go right there. You can see hello from cursor, fix all of the code that needs to be fixed. Pretty cool. So after playing around with MCP servers a little bit, I'm really kind of thinking about them in, in two different ways. One is just kind of as a productivity tool, essentially. So for me, using something like Cursor, I can imagine different MCP servers or different tools that I could bring into my workflow that would save me time because I'm already inside of Cursor. I'm just making this agent smarter and doing things that I would have had to do myself on different systems like Stripe or GitHub or Linear like we just saw. Whatever it is, if I just bring those tools in and make my agent smarter and able to use those tools, that could potentially save me time. Now for me, thinking about these different MCP servers and all of the different tools that are available, I don't know how many would actually be super useful for me. Like even just thinking about that linear tool, do I think it's cool that I can bring that tool into cursor and give my agent the ability to do stuff in linear? Yeah, it's pretty cool. But Practically speaking, it never really has felt like that much of an annoyance for me if I'm working inside of Cursor to have to switch to Linear. I usually have it open anyways, and it takes two seconds to switch to Linear and go and actually create the issue. Would I use Cursor to do that? Maybe. I don't know yet. But there are a lot of the tools that I'm seeing, I'm kind of thinking about them in that way. Like, is it actually that more efficient or convenient for me to use that tool inside of something like Cursor rather than just go to that other service and do whatever I need to do inside of their interface? I don't know the answer to that yet, but there are um, conceivably some different tools that I could bring into Cursor that I think could make my workflow inside of Cursor much more valuable, save me some time, whatever it is. The second way I'm thinking about MCP servers is from a developer's perspective. So again, the real benefit I think of them is being able to take a tool that someone has already built, a server for Stripe or Slack or whatever it is, and to be able to drop that in to an LLM that you're building and give that LLM access to all of these different existing tools. I was thinking about some sort of internal tool at the company I work for, for example, where I was imagining like this general kind of chat interface where different people at my company could ask this LLM that's powering the chat information about our company, whatever it is. Maybe they want to pull reports across all of these different systems. And I'm imagining that this LLM would have access to a bunch of different MCP servers. We use Microsoft Teams, for example. So let's say a Microsoft Teams server, um, a Stripe server for 
revenue related questions or QuickBooks or whatever it is, right? If you could ask this LLM questions that would require it to kind of gather data from all of these different systems that we're using internally, I think building something like that could be a really valuable tool at my company. Um, and I think that as a developer, having access to different MCP servers that I could just kind of drop into the back end to make that easier would save a lot of time. So to bring it all back to the last question that I wanted to answer in this video, which is, is this worth paying attention to? Are MCP servers something that you should start learning about, something that you should start thinking about? I think the answer for me is yes, with a caveat that everything is still very new. A lot of the different servers that I've seen being released on all of these different websites or marketplaces where people are posting them, they do seem to be quite buggy. I don't know how many for me are actually going to be useful in my workflow. I can see a way that using these servers um, for different tools that I want to build or products that I want to build might save me time for development, but everything is still very new. It does strike me as a logical next step that if we're going to keep building agents and if these agents are going to keep getting smarter and smarter, not only in terms of their ability to reason, let's say, but in terms of the different tools that they have available and the different things that they can do, if we're going to keep moving in that direction, it seems like we would need some standardized way as developers to build these different tools that these agents can use. And so in that sense, I think MCP is kind of heading in the right direction. But who knows? This stuff changes so fast. Um, I'm sure in a month or so there will be a whole bunch of other stuff to think about. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new to coding, if you're seeing all of these different AI tools popping up and you're interested in kind of learning how to code using them so that you can build your own software, I'm working on a course for that. It's for beginners. The link is in the description to join the waitlist. It's not quite ready yet, but it will be soon. So sign up for the waitlist and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.